Winter was dragging on in the big city. It seemed the snow would never melt. Fortunately, George and the man with the yellow hat were heading out on a tropical vacation. The bags were packed, the tickets were in place. Yes, the man with the yellow hat had taken care of everything. Except setting the alarm. <sighs> oh, George, we overslept? <laughs> wow, George, I can't believe our luck. No line. What are the chances of that? Pretty good, since all the planes are grounded. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry? Haven't you heard the weather forecast? Oh, no, <laughs> the alarm didn't go off. And then I had to pack my monkey. <laughs> what a cute little monkey. It was just like a real carousel, only longer and greasier. And instead of ponies, it had suitcases. Not just any suitcases. The red suitcase. How did you get out of your crate? Where is your crate? Hey, you don't belong here. You got yourself a seat. Now we gotta get you to your plane. Quick, you can ride in the tub. George! George! This is the final boarding call for Kona Carriers Flight 5230 to Hawaii. H have you seen George? But I can't get on. I've lost my monkey. Now, do you mean George? Enjoy your flight, George. <laughs> Thanks, Captain. Oh, there you are, you little dickens. I was hoping I'd see you again. Remember me from the line? <laughs> you left this on my bag. <laughs> that airport was a fun place. It was like a vacation before vacation. The airport was better than vacation. For George, the quiet beach didn't compare to the buzzing, flashing, beeping airport. <laughs> but then again, when you're curious, fun has a way of just showing up. Good morning, George. I, I'm gonna sleep five more minutes, okay? No! <laughs> yes, sorry! This here roller coaster whips and snaps your old hairpin turns at 70 miles per hour! So come on down to Zany Island and ride the Turbo Python 3000. 
That's Captain's orders. Everyone was excited about riding the Turbo Python 3000. Except the man with the yellow hat. He was afraid of roller coasters and remembered the first and last time he rode a roller coaster. It was so long ago, he was just the boy with the yellow hat. <laughs> and since that day, roller coasters upset him. Okay, I'm a grown man. I have no reason to fear a roller coaster. No! Uh, enjoy the ride, George. Whew. I am thirsty. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Uh, I'm sorry, but you can't ride the Turbo Python 3000. Huh? Well, you have to be as tall as this sign to ride. And, uh, you're not. <laughs> That's it, honey. Go to sleep. Nothing makes you grow like a good sleep. Huh? And I want you to grow up to be big and healthy. All this growing made George tired. If sleep made you grow, he could do two things at once. <laughs> sleep made George grow a lot at least in his dream. I'm sorry. You can't ride the Turbo Python 3000. You're too big. <laughs> George didn't grow as big as he had in his dream, but he grew enough to be five licorice whips tall. <laughs> Seeing Betsy lose her hat reminded the man with the yellow hat of that fateful day. My hat! I lost my hat! No! <laughs> That's it. I I'm not afraid of roller coasters. I'm afraid of losing my yellow hat. Your hat is safe, Betsy! <laughs> what with all these sour faces? I don't like sour faces at me park, you know. Oh, hi there, Captain Zany. You see, this monkey's too short to ride the Turbo Python 3000. Too short? Bah! He's not too short. Monkeys don't grow very big. That's why we have the... You must be this tall if you're a monkey side. <sighs> you can ride, George, and I'm coming with you. But first, give me all your licorice. Huh? Whoa! Incredible Edible Arboretum, a cornucopia of exotic comestibles. Blueberries! Aracia! Blueberries are my favorite bush-based fruit. Come on, George. It, it looks like you all forgot the county sprout rules. Uh, rule number one, never eat any plant that you're not 100% certain is safe. And that means... Consulting the edible plants guidebook? Um, no, it means getting an okay from an adult. Right. Rule number two, plants are living things. You can kill or hurt them if you're too rough. So don't pull on them and don't break any branches. Ah! <laughs> 
Come on. Why is the screen flickering? Either the Earth is off its axis, or I forgot to charge the batteries. Okay. George, can you climb that tree and see where we are? <laughs> and Bill... Bill? Bill, where are you going? Don't worry. I've got my handy backup compass. This way, folks! Bill? A, a sprout never leaves the trail. That, 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 that's rule number three. Bill! Oh, our excitement's really growing Cause we don't know where we're going In this direction, green In this direction, a path <gasps> George couldn't believe what he was seeing Someone was trying to break that branch. Somebody was not being a sprout. Oh no, this man was wrecking a tree. No. Hey, are you a monkey? Cool. I always wanted a monkey, but my mother said no. George had to do something, and fast. This tree was in trouble. Hey, return the headgear, monkey. George didn't mean for the hat to get wet. Or the man. But George couldn't wait around. He had to check on that tree. George wished he could think of a way to get the branches back on the tree. He needed something sticky. Really sticky. Like... Mud. George! Oh, thank goodness I found you! Oh, I'm sorry I left you in that tree. Oh. Dr. Greenbean, nice to see you. Sorry we're late. We've had a rough day. Tell me about it. First this monkey ran off with my hat, and now my tree lopper has vanished. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> hey, what's going on? Who put mud on this? Uh... George? <laughs> ah, so Dr. Greenbean was cutting some branches and you thought he was hurting the tree. Ah, uh -huh. oh, you should have asked. Oh, wait, <laughs> you're a monkey. Well, anyway, this is called pruning. You make a careful cut and it doesn't hurt the tree at all. Mr. Sproutmaster, according to this, you're going the exact wrong... Wait, you're going the right way. Never mind, proceed. <sighs> this was a Saturday that cried out for something special. You know what this morning's crying out for? Huh? Donuts. <laughs> Hold on! I, I have to get dressed. I can't go out like this. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm, I'm going. You don't know impatient until you've been a monkey waiting for a donut. How about eggs with those donuts? Hey, count the eggs and write down how many we have. <laughs> Ready. So how many eggs do we have? 
Hmm. There are no eggs. Well, why didn't you write zero? <laughs> oh, you don't know. I thought I was teaching you everything, and I forgot nothing. <laughs> zero alone means no eggs. None at all. <laughs> but zero with other numbers makes them mean a lot more. See, if we write a zero after one, that's 10. <laughs> <laughs> write another zero, that's 100. <laughs> that's 1,000. 10,000. Hey, nice zeros. You've got it. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I'll go in here and buy eggs while you get the donuts, okay? <laughs> One dozen donuts, please. We'll meet back home. And be a good little monkey. <laughs> George was really hungry. But his order only had a measly one on it. Huh. Huh? Then he remembered what the man with the yellow hat had told him about zeros. <laughs> George, Chucky, good to see ya. Oh, is that an order for your friend with the yellow hat? <laughs> One hundred dozen? Oh, our biggest order ever! Oh, he must be having a giant donut party! George realized what his zeros had done. But try explaining that to a dog. George could only think of one solution to a problem this big. George realized he couldn't go home because then those donut people would know where he lived. So, in the end, George headed home with one dozen donuts. There's no monkey on that dog. <laughs> monkey! We lost him. <laughs> them all. So in the end, George got one dozen donuts, like he was supposed to. And the hard-working firefighters thought everything was perfect. How many left, George? <laughs> the world was full of surprises. But George never imagined anything like this. <laughs> this was the museum's first robot exhibit. So, what do you think, George? I want 10. <laughs> this one has a delicate enough grip to perform surgery or do this. Ooh. Now, over here are examples of what people imagined robots would be. 
<laughs> this is where we'll put your rare models. You will have them here before the opening tonight, right? Oh, sure, I'll bring them back after I take George home. Thanks. Here, you can drive the Mars rover out. Wow! Hunley Shaw loves that. Okay, George. I have to take that with me. Thanks. I'll see you later. I never knew Hunley liked robots so much. That's how George got the idea to make a robot for Hundley to play with. It worked. Hundley thought George was a real robot. <laughs> Being robotic for a whole hour was tiring. George was ready to get out of that thing. But he didn't want to ruin it for Hundley by letting him see the robot wasn't real. Since he couldn't reach the button, George decided to relax and wait till the elevator came. Oh, hi, Professor. Hi, I just came to pick up a small red robot. You mean the one in the lobby? <laughs> he said two inches tall, but I guess he meant uh, two feet. There was the elevator. <laughs> Finally, George could go home. Uh-oh, I left it right here. Oh, no. Someone must have kicked it. Check the floor. I don't think you could kick that thing across the room. Oh, sure you could. It's only two inches tall. You mean two feet. I know the difference between inches and feet, Professor. There's a runaway robot upstairs. It's small, red, and says XF-17 on the side. You got the controls? What controls? It has no moving parts. George, Professor Wiseman brought you to the museum because she thought you were my XF-17. Oh. <laughs> yeah, your outfit's so good you almost ended up on exhibit. Hey, that's a great idea. Huh? We promised an XF-17 model. We never said it wouldn't be monkey-powered. And that's how George became a museum exhibit for a day. <laughs> the man with the yellow hat's hat was special. But what made it so special? George, come on, it's time to go. When I put my hat on, I'm all ready to head out the door. What? Huh? What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, George, that was funny, but you know the rule. No one is allowed to play with the yellow hat. <laughs> George sure liked that yellow hat. <laughs> <laughs> what made the yellow hat so great? <laughs> it was just plain fun. George, I need to wear the hat for an important speech at the museum. Please don't play with it. <gasps> That's what George wanted. A fun hat that he could play with. <laughs> George wanted his fun hat to be more than just a normal hat. And in 
conclusion, bloody bloody blah, blah, blah etc. So forth and so on. <laughs> well, that's some hat and yellow. <laughs> Can I see? Oh, boy, this is one fun hat. <laughs> wow, if I could have had a hat like this, I may never have gotten my yellow one. <gasps> oh, ah. That was the best thing anyone ever said to George. <laughs> you want me to have it? This is the best thing anyone ever gave me. Oh, surprisingly comfortable. Oh no, I'm late. George, I've got five minutes to get to the museum for my speech. I, I have to make a good impression. George was tempted to play with the yellow hat, but the man had asked him not to because he needed to wear it to give a very important speech at the museum. Oh boy. Uh, Professor Wiseman asked me to speak today about the scientific method. <laughs> Of course, we've all heard the saying, what goes around comes around. Um, haven't we? Um, did I say something wrong? No, continue. This is fascinating. Whoa, what's stuck to my hat? Oh! I'm wearing George's... <laughs> Actually, I, I can explain. The scientific method is about thinking creatively, taking chances, and being willing to fail. And you made that point very dramatically. I did? Oh, so modest. Now, where can I get a hat like that? Well, George made it. I want one. I want two. <laughs> and that's how George got his picture on the museum wall. It was a perfect day for sitting on the balcony, drawing birds, eating grapes, and drinking juice. George had seen a lot of birds, but none wearing one of those. Bird had seen a lot of animals, but none doing that. He wasn't going anywhere till he figured out what kind of animal George was. George, be careful out there. Hold on. Just because he came back here doesn't make this his home. <laughs> Homing pigeons have special homes. Ah, that's the pizza. Wash up. George, he needs to go home. This just isn't a good home for pigeons. Oh. If that's how it had to be, 
Then George would turn their home into a good home for pigeons. <laughs> wasn't perfect. Yet. <laughs> Compass, good to see you! Yeah! Compass is an almost homing pigeon. He won't admit he has a weak sense of direction. <laughs> George, the doorman is the pigeon's friend. He came to take him home. <laughs> to his real home. Everybody, look who's home! See, he's back where he belongs. I bought it for birds to sit in so you can draw them. Nice effort, George. But birds want to sit in a real tree. <laughs> Compass, look, a real tree for you. Make yourself at home. Pigeon still didn't know what George was, but he sure made a good tree. <laughs> George was conducting an important experiment, testing the bounce factor of the living room furniture. <laughs> this part of the couch made a different sound. That wasn't the couch. It sounded big. It sounded heavy. And it came from up there. You must have heard our new neighbor walking around. He moved in last week. What George had heard seemed heavier than footsteps. What are you doing? George, you must have heard our neighbor walking. That, that's all it could be. It's not like he's got some wild animal up there. The man with the yellow hat lived with George. So why couldn't the new neighbor live with an animal? What kind? <laughs> of course, the new neighbor had brought home an elephant. <laughs> the man with the
the yellow hat had to hear this. George? <laughs> you, you dreamt about an elephant? books before you go to sleep, George. They're obviously giving you strange dreams. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes? Hi there. We're your downstairs neighbors, and... Oh, so nice to meet you. Uh -huh. <sighs> George? Uh, what's he doing? I think he's looking for your, uh, elephant. My what? <laughs> oh, we heard some loud sounds. Um, very loud sounds. Very loud Oh, I, I am so sorry. Sometimes I get carried away working on my art. Art? I am an artist. I do murals. I mix my paint here. Then I use these rubber stamps I made. Here's one of my completed works. We also heard something like a bag of rocks dropping. Do you use rocks in your work? No. Uh, oh, that was a bag of groceries. It fell off the counter. Huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> hmm. on earth is that? Sounds like an elephant finger painting. Huh? It does. <laughs> oh! Oh! No. No. Uh, no. Good morning, George. Uh, I'm gonna sleep five more minutes, okay? <laughs> no! <laughs> yes, sorry! This here roller coaster whips and snaps your round hairpin turns at 70 miles per hour! So come on down to Zany Island and ride the Turbo Python 3000! That's Captain's ah. orders. Arr. Everyone was excited about riding the Turbo Python 3000. Except the man with the yellow hat. He was afraid of roller coasters and remembered the first and last time he rode a roller coaster. It was so long ago, he was just the boy with the yellow hat. <laughs> Since that day, roller coasters upset him. Okay, I'm a grown man. I have no reason to fear a roller coaster. No! Uh, enjoy the ride, George. Whew. I am thirsty. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Uh, I'm sorry, but you can't ride the Turbo Python 3000. Well, you have to be as tall as this sign to ride. And, uh, you're not. 
That's it, honey. Go to sleep. Nothing makes you grow like a good sleep. Huh? And I want you to grow up to be big and healthy. <laughs> All this growing made George tired. If sleep made you grow, he could do two things at once. <laughs> made George grow a lot, at least in his dream. I'm sorry, you can't ride the Turbo Python 3000. You're too big. George didn't grow as big as he had in his dream, but he grew enough to be five licorice whips tall. <laughs> my hat! I lost my hat! Seeing Betsy lose her hat reminded the man with the yellow hat of that fateful day. My hat! I lost my hat! No! That's it. I I'm not afraid of roller coasters. I'm afraid of losing my yellow hat. Your hat is safe, Betsy! <laughs> <laughs> what with all these sour faces? I don't like sour faces at me park, you know. Oh, hi there, Captain Zany. You see, this monkey's too short to ride the Turbo Python 3000. Too short? Bah! He's not too short. Monkeys don't grow very big. That's why we have the... You must be this tall if you're a monkey side. <sighs> you can ride, George, and I'm coming with you. But first, give me all your licorice. Huh? Whoa! 